In Acumatica 2021 R1, we have a new feature that you can see here on page 244 of the release notes. It's business events triggered by an action. Now up until this point, business events have always been something that were automated. You can either send them automatically on a record change or automatically on a schedule. This new feature allows us to give people the ability to manually trigger a business event. And you can see the new feature on the business event screen under the type. It's this third option here that is new. The first two are how you would send a business event automatically. This third option allows you to set it up to be available manually. And where it becomes available is on a generic inquiry. So you can see I've set up this overdue invoice email business event. I put it on the invoices and memos screen. So this is to allow someone to quickly send an automatic email. Although the, the triggering of it won't be automatic, the email would be automatically generated for an invoice that's overdue. And you can see down here I created a subscriber, an email notification subscriber. And if we take a look at this email setup, we can see that it's set up to go to the contact. Now, I did want to show you the generic inquiry. If we click over here, you can see that I added the contact table. I joined over to it based off of the customer's default billing contact. That's what I wanted to use in this case. That way I could change it on the customer and it would change without me having to change it on the individual invoices. And then I made the field available down on the bottom here, contact email on the results grid. So the nice thing here is that I'm able to set it up however I want on the generic inquiry, and then you pull it in on the email template. So it's very flexible in terms of who the email is going to. Then I've got a subject here, including this dynamic information where it will pull in the, the invoice number based on whatever invoice is being emailed. And I've got a very simple but direct email message down below. Now I also went to attached reports and I set it up so that the invoice, a PDF version of the invoice, would be attached to the email. So now we can go over to the generic inquiry, uh, which is over here, invoices and memos. And if we look here, we could maybe send these first two invoices. And what I like about this is a lot of times you want to automate things, but you don't want to just necessarily go from your very manual process to automation right away. So I really like this new feature because it gives someone the ability to still be in control and still intervene and determine which invoices are getting emailed. So it's still manual, but you're stepping into automation by not having to have them open up their email manually, type an email manually, put in the email address manually, hopefully they do it correctly, attach the invoice, that's very manual. This is still manually triggered, but you'll see it's very much smoother, and you know I would even almost use the word automatic at this point already. So I can check off these first couple of invoices, I can go to actions up here, and here's the business event that I created. And because I use this new feature, it's available as an action on the generic inquiry. So you can see with just a few clicks, I'm still manually determining which invoices go out, but I can click here with just a few clicks and the emails get sent. And I, I think that's, that's great. I like that you can do it manually. Now, if we wanna look at the email, let's pull it up here. And the second one's still coming through, but we can take a look at this first one. And you can see that it dynamically shows, uh, found who the default billing contact was on the customer. It put in the invoice number in the subject and down here in the body of the email. It had my pre-canned email message and it even attached a PDF version of the invoice right here. So very smooth, very easy to use. And if we come back, let's see here to, we'll go back to the email activity just to prove that it did in fact send both emails, just takes a little while for the second one to come through. Now I also like that, so we've given someone a way to manually trigger a few emails to be sent, uh, overdue invoice emails, 
but now let's say we want to take the next step, get a little bit closer to being fully automated, but still give someone manual intervention. We can set up a filter up here. I called mine overdue. And if we look at this filter, we can see it's very simple. It's just open invoices that have a due date that is overdue. We can see down here that there are 122 invoices that meet my overdue filter criteria. Now, I don't have to go through and check off all 122 individually. I can go back up to actions and use this second option and that way it will automatically send whatever's currently available on the filter. So in this case, it will just send the 122 invoices. So let's say I get comfortable by doing it, manually checking them off. I get comfortable that my filter is working correctly. Now I can save myself some work and just use this option right here. So of course, this will take a while doing all 122. But I really like this because I'm stepping into making it more and more automated. And then once I get someone comfortable that this is working correctly, all of these 122 are going out, they're comfortable with the filter. You can see it queues up a lot of emails here. Now you're just one step away from scheduling it. So once they're comfortable and they just feel like their manual intervention is not adding any value anymore, you can now go back to the business event and just simply change it to be now triggered on a schedule. Maybe you send it out once a week over the weekend or whatever type of schedule you'd like. And now at that point, you're fully automated. But this new feature here allows us to get started, especially in situations where we're not quite comfortable automating it. Well, let's use this new feature and give someone the ability to still have a much better workflow, but still manually intervene and decide when the business event is getting triggered by doing it using the action on the generic inquiry.